Oh, hey, kids. How's everybody out there in YouTube land? <clears throat> Give me a second here trying to get the chat pulled up on the PC. Get down. Get down. We're not going to start with that nonsense this morning. <clears throat> Hello, Sorrenti. How you doing, sir? <clears throat> yeah, you made it this time. I think this Wednesday morning time, Wednesday morning for me, I guess Wednesday evening for you guys, works out a lot better for people on your side of the pond. So, hello, Kyle. How you doing? Hello, Martin. How's your day doing? My day's doing great. Willie, go lay down. Don't even start. Kennel. My day's doing great here. Having a really good week. I doubt the rough seas made it this time. You know, David, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, weird things happen, but... Um, it, I, I don't want to criticize anybody, so I'm just going to leave the rough seas topic alone because I've been catching a lot of heat lately for being negative on stuff, so... <clears throat> you guys know my opinion of it. I'll just leave it at that, so... Hey, Tim K, how you doing? Hey, Simon, how's things going? Kennel. Miss Lily's bouncing around like an idiot, so I'll just put her up for a little while, let her calm down some. <clears throat> I really thought she'd be good this morning. I got a fire going in the wood stove. I thought she'd be hugging the wood stove and trying to warm herself up, but apparently she's all full of energy this morning. Yeah, Martin and David, yeah, try, just try to let it go, so. I almost didn't see, yeah, I'm hiding in my camouflage here, so nobody can see me. Um, guys, you know, as a, as a farmer, I've been a hunter my whole life, and so I, I, I have a lot of camouflage. And frankly, I find my camouflage very comfortable. So I wear camouflage all year long. I have camouflage sweatpants and camouflage t-shirts. And I just really don't care how I look, apparently. So I dress for comfort, and they're comfortable. So uh, did Bob have insurance cramps? Mike, I have no idea. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. And it wouldn't work anyway because insurance, generally speaking, doesn't cover you for a named storm, which this would be. Hello, Frederick. How are you, sir? Sailing Dijon, how are you? <clears throat> I'm going to get to what's new here in just a minute. I, I like to wait a little bit at the beginning of the live stream for the room to fill up. So, um, cold in UK as well. Yeah, it's been cold, wet, and rainy here. In fact, you can see my thermometer behind me here. It was 29 degrees this morning. 29 Fahrenheit here in Alaska. And it's now 33 degrees outside. And, uh... It is 65. It was 64. I, I got a fire going. And now I tell you, it feels like it's 90 degrees in here now. It's really hot. My thermometer hasn't caught up with the the warmth right now. So, hey, whole shot. Hey, uh, Rhonda, how you doing, darling? Thanks for being here. <clears throat> I didn't see. Was Marie in the room? I, did I miss saying hello to Marie? Maybe I didn't see her. Thought I saw Marie. I would have seen her. Did Marie sneak in? I don't know. Oh, uh, what do you think about Warham Design Tiki 38? I'm not a big... F I've never sailed on one, but the... the, the <clears throat> and I know there's people that do, and I know they've crossed oceans. I, they just make me uncomfortable. Um, you know, having the hulls tied on with rope just seems kind of... I, I don't know. I like a bit more substantial boat than that, I think. Start, starting to pack your stuff. Good job, Kyle. Congratulations on the move. <clears throat> I see whole shot is here. Hello, Austin. Stream is lagging since we're getting Jose. May not be able to watch this time. Really? <clears throat> I wonder why Jose would affect the internet. Ah, you assumed Marie was here. Well, we all know what happens when we assume things. So, gosh, I haven't brushed my hair this morning or anything. Got a late start this morning, guys. 
just got up a little bit ago and I was like, oh shit, I got to get set up for my live stream. So with it staying dark here later, I, uh, I tend to sleep in. I get a lot of sleep in the wintertime, way too much. So you're lagging too, huh? Well, guys, I'm using my cell phone to do the upload, so I cannot control my bit rate uh, like I did when I was doing it before with my laptop. I've stopped doing it with my laptop because I can't get as good a video quality, but with the cell phone, I don't have the ability to change the bit rate or to slow it down uh, to degrade it, so I'm afraid it is what it is. Um, if you're having problems with buffering and lagging, try refreshing at your end. Uh, that seemed to help everybody last time we did this. So, uh, see, I'm in Georgia. Stream is lagging here as well. Also lagging in Germany. Darn. Um, <clears throat> all I can tell you is that people refreshed last time, and that seemed to get it caught up. So, I'm, I'm also lagging up here in Alaska, but um, that's nothing new for me. So, hey, Jackson Miller, how you doing? Yeah, just try refreshing. That seems like it works for most people. Getting better already. Good deal, Martin. All right. Well, we're a couple minutes into the hour here, so I might as well let everybody finish refreshing, I guess. Hey, Steve's Vids. How you doing? Hey, Chris, Mike, what's going on? Who lags last? There you go. I like that. 8 p.m. in Finland right now, yeah. Well, it's 9 a.m. here in Alaska, so we're we're on opposite sides of the planet pretty much. I'm going straight from the internet to my TV. Yes, well, refresh your internet. Steve and Chris in the house. There you go. All right. All right, so let me kind of get to stuff. First of all, guys, it has been a fantastic week up here in Alaska for Grandpa. Um, on, on almost every single front, I've had just a really, really good week. Um, last, on Sunday, I was kind of lamenting about having to rebuild my real estate business and, you know, having, you know, had that woman trying to buy my property, I kind of segue down and and let things kind of wind down for my real estate business well i've been working really hard this last couple of weeks trying to get it put back into high gear and and so far the last couple of days i've picked up a whole bunch of new listings i've got nine new real estate listings in the last two days which is i think a record even for me i don't think i've ever gotten that many new listings in that short of a period of time i have been busier than a no-arm paper hanger here trying to get all the work caught up so my real estate business has really been uh, flying the last couple of days, which is awesome, which is really awesome. So uh, let's see what else do I have on my notes here. Um, <clears throat> weight loss is doing great. I've been gotten really aggressive with it, uh, walking and working out. My back was bothering me a little bit last week, but I've got that straightened out and uh, been been working really hard on the weight loss and hitting that pretty hard. Um it's tough. It's tough. My traditional breakfast has always been, you know, three eggs over easy bacon, hash browns, and toast. I mean, I've had that breakfast almost every morning of my life, probably 90% of the time. And uh, now breakfast consists of a banana, an apple, an orange, and a cup of yogurt. Which, you know, um, is actually pretty tasty. When you think about it, I mean, the fruits are nice there, so they taste really good. So next time you do groceries, go walking. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I always walk. Well, you know, I, I've learned to like park at the far end of the parking lot now, not the closest parking lot to the, to the building and trying to build in some exercise in my day. So, uh, okay. What else have, um, <clears throat> oh, I had a couple really good showings of the property this week. Um, positive stuff. Nothing definite. No paperwork or offers or anything, but uh, a couple really good showings on the property. So that had me pretty optimistic. Been getting a lot of people that will, like, pull their car in the driveway, you know, kind of poke in and look around. You know, they, they won't get out of their car. They'll just kind of pull in a little bit, look around, then back out, which I find kind of funny to see that because I can see the end of my driveway from my cabin and, 
I always find that kind of funny to see people do that. So, got some of the yard cleaned up, <clears throat> um, which was good. Got some of the cabin cleaned up, which is good. Um, got a couple of vids out. I had a couple of real estate or a couple of uh, um, boating vids that I got out from my channel. <clears throat> what I have out, I have the, the Charlie Simon story. Amazing guy. Amazing guy. He's actually hunkered down here in Alaska now. He's in the Gulf of Alaska. We've had a big storm in the Gulf of Alaska that just now broke up. That's got him kind of hunkered down. But uh, uh, he was out on the uh, Aleutians. But he did that Northwest Passage around the north part of, uh, uh, well, the north part of North America, obviously. That's why it's called the Northwest Passage. And, um, you know, listening to the stories and seeing some of the video that he's put out afterwards of him selling his boat through just fields of, of giant uh, uh, icebergs and stuff, um, <clears throat> you know, it really makes me wonder. There's another YouTube channel that's talking about taking a, a fairly new catamaran on the Northwest Passage. And, uh, man, after watching some of the videos that Charlie Simon put out, I think they ought to rethink that because... Those catamarans don't have the range. They don't carry enough fuel. They don't carry enough water for that kind of a long trip. Uh, it's a long ways between places to resupply. And you really got to have your uh, communications perfect because <clears throat> it's pretty dangerous to be out there where you're at. So, Martin, that's probably a 100-mile round trip in Alaska. No thanks. What's a 100-mile round trip? I meant, I meant the whole way. What did I miss? Did I miss something in the chat? Oh, to go grocery shopping. Um, can be. If I go, well, if I go to Costco, it's 200-mile round trip. If I go to Walmart, it's a 110-mile round trip. But if I go over here to my, my little local small IGA store that I have nearby, it's only a 12-mile round trip. So... A tornado walks into a bar and orders a hurricane. The bartender asks, why is he ordering a hurricane when he is a tornado? The tornado responds with, I'm a hurricane-induced tornado. Yeah. See, Tim, that was the same... <laughs> that was the same problem I was having. I came up with this great title, you know, Three Hurricanes Walk Into a Bar. And I couldn't think of a damn thing to take that and go any further. I've really been struggling since I put that out a couple of days ago that I was going to do this live stream titled that. <clears throat> and I couldn't come up with anything. So I, I a major fail on old grandpa's part here. Major fail. So I uh, I just couldn't come up with anything. Any So that's as good as anything. And that's, you know, pretty bad. So <laughs> sorry, Tim. Oh, man. <laughs> that was my reaction I joke to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Well, you guys try to come up with something because I couldn't. It was complete failure on my part. And then the other video I did was the the Sirius 40 DS. Uh, awesome boat. Um, in fact, uh, SV Compromise, which is oftentimes on my live streams, uh, a good a good YouTube channel, new channel from UK. Uh, they went to one of the boat shows there in England, and they, they also did a video on the Sirius 40 DS. I hate these videos from the boat shows, though, because you really can't shoot anything because you got so many people walking back and forth, and you don't have time for anything. But um, what made you move to Alaska? I'll get to that in just a second. But anyhow, he did a good video. And he, he also agreed that the Sirius was a really nice boat. It was his favorite boat at the boat show. Uh, and he was saying that the build quality on the Sirius 40DS was equal to a Moody, which I thought was a hell of a statement because Moody's are usually pretty much right up there. So a uh, pretty fancy boat. So that Sirius 40 and the consensus is for the people that set foot on the boat is it's worth every penny. And that's a, that's a pricey darn boat. That's a lot of money for the 40-footer, um, but really nice. So Simon says, I went on a smaller one last year, too. Yeah, I guess they are. Yeah, they did, Keith. They really did. They did a great job filming with all the people around, but um, always difficult trying to do that kind of stuff. So 
Okay, somebody asked me why I, I moved up to Alaska. Uh, my daughter um, got involved in dog mushing uh, when we lived in Montana. I had a nice house sitting on a bank overlooking the Yellowstone River in Paradise Valley, Montana. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Great hunting. Had my real estate business there. Everything was doing great. And we got the, uh, the wild hair idea that she wanted to move up here to Alaska where she could have better trail access uh, for training her dogs because she wanted to be an Iditarodder. So many years ago, we moved up here to Alaska so she could have the trail access, and we ended up buying this 80 acres up here. Now, the end of that story is uh, <clears throat> wife and I got divorced. A uh, daughter now, I think, lives in London, uh, of all places, and isn't dog mushing anymore. And I'm the one stuck up here in Alaska, and I was the one who did not want to live in Alaska of the three of us. So, go figure, right? So, hopefully I'll get out of here soon. Have the place for sale. Have lots of people looking at it. We're getting a lot of traffic and a lot of showing, so hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to get out of here. So, my two problems with the Sirius are the headroom in the salon where so much time is spent at the price point, great engineering and storage though. Steve, I, I wasn't aware there was a headroom problem in the salon. I thought he said the headroom was 6'6", six, six, which is pretty good for that. So just watch the snorkeling accident on Sophisticated Lady to use flags when diving. Uh, yes and no, Craig Rist. Um, it just depends on where we are and where we're diving and what we're doing. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Generally speaking, I like to have a dive flag up, but you know, most people just ignore them anyway. So, um, they think they're a buoy or something. So, you know, this is the problem with having so many people out there on boats, captaining boats that have no knowledge what they're doing. You know, the credit card captains, the people without any training that just go jump on a boat and go running around. So... You're too nice like me. Okay, thanks, Carnahan. I appreciate that. We had a great bow show and meet up with Carl and Jenny, Gavin Hanna of Compromise. Well, cool, Simon. I wish I'd been there. Why did your daughter quit mushing? Uh, she went to college, and and she had a real bad scare. She was running her dog team and ended up going into a river um, and uh, almost lost some of her dogs. Um, really got frightened and I think that was the biggest thing for her that kind of got her to decide that that was a bit more than she wanted to deal with so I'm six foot four and there's no issue with headroom in the search yeah I'm six three and a half so Simon I guess we're about the same size I could stand alongside the salon and in the galley area had to hunch over to slide into the salon seats huh lost two toes off one of mine Okay, I guess from being in a river or something, you lost two toes off a foot. Uh, I'm 5'6", so me bumping me head is never a problem. <laughs> yeah, not at 5'6". Uh, why is a hurricane like a typical woman? She's going to come in all wet and wild and leave you without car house. <laughs> Now, Tim, uh, having recently come through a divorce, I can relate with that. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. That's almost a little too adult for this channel. But, yeah, I like that. Hey, Captain Jack. <clears throat> yeah, Steve, I'm like you. I'm six three and a half, so I bump my head all the time. You know, I got a permanent lump right here in my head from that. So, holy shit, my dad got a phone in the middle of it, I guess. Okay, uh, I was on. I was not on the 40 series, by the way. I was on the 35. Huh. Well, maybe they've learned something with the design of the 40. I guess I don't know. Please call Keith. Okay. Uh, let's see, Tim, that's a good one. Yes, it is. That was a very good one. Oh, no need to apologize, Tim. No need to apologize. I'm sure they are well aware of the situation. In fact, I think they get trained that as young children. One of the series models can do... You know, Pete, it's interesting that you mentioned that about the, the handling on the series. On YouTube, the Sirius 40... Um, I don't forget what the name of their channel is. It's Sirius minus something or other. Um, 
I'm sure if you just type in the serious name, you'll find it. They actually have a video on the 40 or just on their handling, and he shows the guy trying to back the boat up to a key, you know, like to a dock or something, how they med more all the time. And it was amazing the control he had on backing the boat up. So uh, very interesting that they have such maneuverability. So they uh, certainly know how to uh, use that, uh, that uh, uh, rudder. Really know how to convert those strange foot lengths. Okay. Lost my toes. Oh, and the Gulf War. Never found them. Yeah, that, that'll happen. That'll happen. Wars are tough on body parts. Thanks for your service, Austin. I appreciate it. Tim is a regular, so he gets some slack. Yes, he does. Everyone should check the Google, the Gordy, and the Witch. I have no idea how they have managed so far. Very interesting. Watch and read. Has anyone seen it? No, I've not seen Gordy and the Witch. Craig Erst, I, I'm not sure who that is. That's a new one on me. Is that a YouTube channel? Because if so, I'm not aware of it. So let me get the dog a bone. She's, she's whining. Keep her bribed for a little while longer. She's upset with me right now. She messed her, her blanket up in her crate. And so I have it out getting rained on. So I can wash it, and uh, so she went last night without her her blankie, and so she's a little upset with me, I think. So they will come down on their price soon and be able to compete with the market because they were way at the top end of the market. Keith, I don't know about that. Um, you know, it's not an apples to apples kind of comparison. I think that Sirius boat has. Um, so many design features built in, uh, which of course is going to increase build cost. You know, every time you add drawer slides and another drawer and a little bit more work here, and a little bit more woodwork there and fitting this and fitting that and the time and effort to do all that, you're really building in some costs. I don't know if they're going to come down much. So I like it more with the H inside. Hmm. Yep, go ahead and watch it. Almost a fairy tale, beautiful women to running out of food for a week. Okay. Kirkland needs a sponsor for all the free advertising they get. Yeah, they probably should, but they're probably not going to. You're right, it's not apples to apples, but money to money, and that's what they will think about. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure. You like the outro of her zooming around? Yeah, Chris, I, I thought that was fun, you know, having her run around like that. I did it in slow motion, make it more dramatic and all that kind of happy horse shit. So, hey, Kim, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Kim Binkley in the house. So, anyhow, going back to my notes, what else should we talk about here? Uh, oh, yeah. Tomorrow is a good day, guys. Tomorrow is a good day. I get paid tomorrow. Tomorrow is a good day. <laughs> you know, in in the 30-some years of my life, I've never had a job that pays me a regular paycheck. Um, it's sort of an anomaly for me because I'm a real estate broker. And before that, I was a stockbroker. And, you know, I've, I've just... I've been working on commission my whole life, so I've never had anything where I can say on this day of each month I've got something coming in. But now that I'm a YouTuber, I get paid on the 21st of the month, which I think is just hysterical. I mean, it's not much. You guys know it's not much. I'm not making much from my... I don't have enough subscribers, and I don't have enough view count, but with people contributing to the chat uh, on my live streams and... With the views that I do get, um, it helps. It really, it really, really helps. So, yeah, I thought it was funny that I, I get paid tomorrow, which I thought was hysterical. And, and so uh, it just struck me that I, I should bring that up because tomorrow's a good day because I get my paycheck tomorrow for the month. So, need a job so I can get paid. <laughs> so, you are usually, yes, yes. Isn't broker an unfortunate name for the person with which you entrust your money? You know, as a stock broker, 
And and to be honest, to be fair, you know, most of them do a really good job of living up to the name. They make you broker and broker as time goes on because they keep hitting those fees and, you know, making trades that you probably didn't need to make in the first place. And so that's why I got out of the securities industry. I didn't like the direction it was heading. Boom, but besides a warm tiki, what would be a good budget multi hull? Wow. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, Multi-hull and budget just don't tend to go well with each other. Um, they really don't. So I would say you need to get up in, into, you know, you need to get up into the real catch. You know, you need to get into like a Lagoon 39 or a Leopard 39 or something of that size before you start getting into what I consider to be a real catamaran. So... Oh, hopefully the rough seas makes it through the storm. Would you reconsider buying it if you sell in time and it's still floating? No, Jackson, I, I don't think I would want to buy it at this point. Um, my situation here is that when I sell my farm now, since I'm not going to be involved in any owner financing, uh, I'm going to have more money to work with than what I thought I was going to have. And so... Um, That'll give me the opportunity to uh, buy a much better boat. So I'll be buying a much better boat. So thank you, Kim. I appreciate that you clicked like. That's a nice way to remind everybody to do that. Good idea. Does YouTube keep you in dog food? Yeah, that's just about it. I make about enough money to buy Lily dog food and dog bones. So <laughs> never really looked at multi hulls. Yeah, I I'm a big multi hull fan. To be honest with you guys, I you know if I have the money, I would much rather be in a multi hull. Only because it's a much more stable platform for us for filming and stuff. Um, let's see. What do you have for internet service in Alaska? I have excellent internet service, um, but the highest upload speed I can get is 2 meg, which is why I'm using my cell phone to do my upload instead of using my internet to do the upload. BBC just said that Hurricane Maria has taken out all the power from Puerto Rico. Yeah, guys, as we're speaking right now, Puerto Rico is being hit with Hurricane Maria. Uh, she's been downgraded from a Category 5 to a Category 4, but still, Puerto Rico got a direct hit. And, you know, bless those people. They were so good with with organizing and, and, and getting uh, uh, going and, and helping out the people in the other islands that got hit from Irma. And now they're being hit. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, we simply can't do enough to help out the people in Puerto Rico. Um, they're really getting hammered. I mean, right now, as we speak, they're getting hammered. The storm is sort of moving offshore. I don't know if I can do this here. Hold on one second. Let me just see if I can. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the chat here for a second, guys. But I don't know if I can do this here with my phone. But let's see here. Can you see that? That's a hurricane sitting right smack on top of uh, Puerto Rico, and that's live right now. That's exactly where the storm is at at this very moment. So those poor folks in Puerto Rico are being hammered right this very second while we're talking. And and big winds. You know, I'm seeing I'm seeing huge wind speeds in there. Uh, wave height. Uh, in the 40 foot range 35 to 40 foot waves hitting it it's just um you know let me get it switched over to waves yeah there you go whoop let me see if i can do it there you go those bigger waves you see those those are 40 foot waves hitting it there so pretty nasty stuff pretty sorry if i'm bouncing you all over the place here but Pretty nasty stuff going on. So, <clears throat> yeah, they, they're taking a direct hit. And um, so it's going to be more than just power outage. It's going to be a whole lot worse than that. So, uh, legally, you have to pay tax on YouTube and Patreon revenue. Yes, you have to pay tax on your income. I think that went over a thousand two live streams ago due to the Canadian guy. Not sure what that's referring to. I must have missed a lot. Sorry, I'm going back and reading the chat, guys. Give me a second here. 
I saw one guy give Bob over $500 the other day. Yeah, um, on the live chat. You, you know, some of the channels make bank on the live chat. They really do. Um, and, you know, uh, YouTube takes a big percentage of it, of the money coming on the live chat. You know, it still helps tremendously, but they take a big hit. I wonder if he's going if he's actually going to be able to collect. Why wouldn't you be able to collect, Craigerist? YouTube pays on the twenty first of the month for me. I don't know. I mean, I imagine they pay different people at different days, but I get paid on the twenty first every single time. So Okay, it's a slow moving stream. Yeah, it is a very slow moving storm. Yes it is. Rough seas is toast. Yeah, it might be, you know. Guys, um, <sighs> I hate doing this, but here's the thing, guys. There's a certain thing called etiquette. And etiquette should dictate how we live. It, it, it tells us, you know, which fork to use for eating what food item and it tells us how to respond to our elders and how to behave in front of law enforcement etiquette is the thing that tells us how what the rules are of society basically and um the thing of that is is that you've got to be um you've got to be careful in how you behave yourself and how you treat others and in a marina it's no different when when you're on boats and you're out in harbors and you're in marinas and it's hurricane season etiquette plays a very serious role in how you should behave leaving your canvas up on your boat to get caught up in the winds makes your boat a problem because what happens is the wind catches into those sails those sails unravel somewhat and it allows the wind to get a purchase on your boat making your boat a great big battering ram that's then going to go down through the marina and wreck a whole bunch of other boats that were polite enough to pull all their canvas off their boats and do what they could to hurricane proof their boats and so I don't mean to be critical of anybody else but it's certainly good hurricane etiquette and you can check this with any sailor cruiser in the world to pull all your canvas off your boat that's being polite to your neighbors not only does it save your boat but it's being polite to your neighbors um, time and again people that don't care about their boats have left their canvas up and sure enough, those boats have been the ones that have caused so much damage in some of these marinas. So I think when, you know, you have a boat, you have a responsibility to your neighbors. Just like when you have a house, you have a responsibility to your neighbors. Um, you know, you wouldn't like it if one of your neighbors let their yard grow way big and painted their house purple and orange and, you know, basically was affecting the, the property values in your community. Well, the same thing holds true with having your sailboat in a marina. You should follow proper etiquette and and behave according to you know the rules that are accepted and so anyhow um so yes simon i think i dodged a bullet and that's one of the reasons why i would not buy the rough seas at this point going forward so um kim i i'll i can talk to you about the percentages later on actually i don't know the exact percentages i've not added them up but um, you know, it's like seven or eight, I think something like that percent that they take. So, oh yeah, I missed the first one. I'm reasonably sure I didn't do this on a regular basis. My bad. Okay. Bobby said that he paid a fellow to pull down the canvas on the rough seas. Um, well, okay. I hope he did. Um, it was my understanding the pictures that I saw of it after the first storm as the canvas was still up so 
Give Lily a big hug for Candace. Yeah. I'm trying to leave her in her crate, even though she's unhappy in there, just because she gets to be too much while I'm trying to do the live streams. Oh, uh, if I had... A, when I'm talking like this, she thinks I'm talking to her, and she gets all excited, so... If I had a boat down the Caribbean, I would have it moved out ahead of time. We can see these storms coming. Yeah, yeah, you know, Austin, you just don't be there. That's exactly what you do. You move your boat out of the area. But if you, for, if for some reason you don't move your boat out of the area, then you have a responsibility to hurricane-proof your boat as best you can. Hey, Steve Newby, how you doing? Yes, absolutely, Steve's Vidge, it does. It goes with anchoring, mooring, and everything. I mean, there are certain, you know, there there are something called coal regs, which are the rules of the road, you know. Uh, if, a, if a, you know, a boat on a port tack is crossed, you know, they have all these bizarre scenarios set up where they have rules as to how you should steer or maneuver your boat given a certain circumstance. But what coal regs doesn't address is anchoring and, and marina etiquette, and that's something that, you know, You'll learn with time because your neighbors are in a marina. You know, some of them are going to be outspoken. You know, you pull up and you anchor next to somebody without, with, you know, too much scope or not enough scope out in your anchor. Someone's going to yell at you, you know, get the hell away from me. You're too close or, you know, whatever. So um, you, you have to learn what is proper and acceptable and, you know, kind of, kind of work within the parameters of society and there is as much society in in the boating world as there is anywhere else so yeah mike albanese says you're right about the marine etiquette yeah absolutely i do think he prepared as much as he could this time well craig rest i don't see how you can say that considering he didn't do anything this time in fact he left he left and he went to whatever I'm, I'm over it. Hey, Augenet, how you doing? Between hurricanes, Bobby paid a guy to secure the rough seas better. Well, I hope so. To me, even if Bob's boat makes it through, it's going to be hard to sell it for the money he's asking. Uh, a lot of fixer-uppers out there, nice boats. Yep, yeah, and his boat did, did sustain some damage. Hey, Kim Johnson. Only a minute, just wanted to say howdy from Edmonton. Well, hey, Kim, howdy. It would be interesting to see how much damage to boats inflicted by the other boats, uh, owners versus other boats. Actually, Steve, uh, there's some statistical analysis done that. There's some insurance companies that obviously have, you know, insurance companies break everything down to the numbers, and they've certainly looked at that because those boats that don't strip their canvas and prepare uh, can be sued by the neighboring boats for damage done to their boats. So, and believe me, the insurance companies are going to sue. Not, not with these little pitlin boats, you know, not these $20,000, $30,000 boats. But when you get up in the half a million, a million dollar boats, you can guarantee they're going to sue if you're not doing what you should be doing next to them. So, absolutely, Home Place Journal, absolutely. You're absolutely correct there. Yep, do on to others. Yes, Christine, that's actually correct. Uh, I think the rough seas was mine. I would have been onto the mischief crew to take it somewhere else. Um... Yeah. <laughs> uh, not an argument. He did attempt this time around short of moving it. Okay, I'm not following Bob anymore, so I'm not sure what he's saying on his videos, but um, it remains to be seen whether that was ever done or not. So I'll never spend another hurricane season in his own, but my boat's not ready to cruise. Or I would get the hell out of here. Yes, Mike, absolutely. And, and you know, there are times you're going to get caught in those situations. Exactly. You know, you have your boat up on the hard. You're doing work on it or something. You're not in a situation where you can move your boat. Um, but generally speaking, if you have a boat that is able to move, you have a responsibility to keep your boat. Captain's first rule, okay? You got to keep your crew safe and your boat safe. Those are the first two rules of being a boat captain. So... And that means if there's a hurricane coming, get the hell out of Dodge. Guys, if you're driving down the highway and you pull into the left lane and there's a car coming at you, you move back into your lane. It's just, it's the exact same scenario. Exactly the same scenario. So, Austin, enjoy your lunch, man. Talk to you later. <clears throat> To be honest, Carl, what you are talking about is best practice, but if you had bought any boat in Puerto Rico just before Irma, 
Yes, and, and in fact, Dave's absolutely correct. Had I bought the rough seas, I would be equally as guilty because I would I would have, uh, well, actually, if I had bought it, I would have bought it and literally been after, I mean, the hurricane would have hit before I could have even gotten to the boat. Um, so I would have been just as guilty. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, would the boat be better off on the hard? Boy, there's a tough question, Tim. It depends on the severity of the storm. Um, you know, if you're up on the hard and there's 40 foot waves coming across, probably won't make a difference. You know, uh, you look at all the boats in Nanny Key Marina and in uh, the British Virgin Islands, uh, all the boats, even on the hard, all of them got knocked over. And Nanny Key has got hurricane ties. Um, they've got these things that are like concrete foundations, almost like a basement that they bring the boat in and kind of set the boat down into a little bit. There's no water in it. It's just like a, a, a real heavy concrete foundation. And then they run ties down and, and strap the boats down into these hurricane uh, holes, basically, for uh, putting them up on the hard. And those tend to work. But even those, the winds were so severe, the straps broke and those boats fell over. So... So where is your boat? Ah, my boat's in dreamland right now, Joe. I sold my boat that I had up here in Alaska. I am between boats right now. I will be buying another boat just as soon as I can get my farm up here in Alaska sold. Miss Schiffer probably not even looking for another boat right now. Hell, their lives got turned upside down. Yeah, they certainly did. Um, yeah, Kim saying that uh, Puri, uh, Alberto and Puri, who are being hammered right now, they did a video showing what they did to preserve their boat, and that's exactly what you need to do. They did a really good video in that regard. Um, you know, <sighs> yeah, they have to wait for insurance. Yep, yep, yep. Saw that too, Kim, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm really hoping they come through it. Well, Craig Rush, you're, you're one of the people that keep bringing it up. I'm trying to get past it. So, anyhow, hello, Marie. How are you doing? Glad to see you here. Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyhow, guys, up here in Alaska, had a good week. Had a couple of good look. Had a couple of people take a solid look at the property. Um, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys ends up buying it. Um, you know, one fellow has actually been talking to the bank already and checking out all the details, and but he has to sell his property. So I don't know how long that may take. Uh, but certainly having some serious looking at the property. So I do think something's going to happen here pretty quickly. And I've been doing some boat shopping and looking at some interesting boats, and there are some interesting boats out there available right now um, in that 36 to 40 foot range. Maybe not perfect. Maybe not the best boat in the world, you know, maybe not the perfect boat for me, but certainly boats that are going to work well for what my plans are. So I think multi-hull would be appreciated more than a mono-hull by my significant other do than comfort while cruising. Yeah, I, I prefer catamarans. I'm making no qualms about that. And uh, there are people, believe it or not, that don't subscribe to my channel because I say that, so... Yep, I'm glad I dodged that bullet too, Free Lily. <laughs> Preparing for hurricanes is one thing, but the images of six by two boards driven straight through trees. Yeah, yeah, they're nothing to mess with, man. Those wind speeds are phenomenal. <clears throat> My chat stopped auto scrolling. Any tips? I'm on mobile. Oh, Chris, I do know. I don't know. Try dumping out of the program and back into it. You know, get off, get off YouTube and then back into YouTube. Maybe that'll help you find better Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rhonda, if he's on mobile, he can't refresh. Um, he'll have to dump off the program and back into the program. Make sure you keep money back for repairs. Absolutely, Kyle. Yes, absolutely. What are your thoughts on the various boat ownership as a business approach to buying a new boat? 
Uh, Doug, I think you're referring to like buying one of the charter boats and, and having it on charter down in the British Virgin Islands and letting the, the charter income from the boat pay for it. Is that what you're referring to? If so, comment again and, and, I'll, and I'll talk a little bit about that. This is why we choose a trailerable blue water boat. We're on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, just too risky here this time of year. Yeah, well, if you can put a boat on a trailer, you can certainly drive it up in the mountains and get it out of the storm. So, close the app and restart. Yep, too early to track a cold one. Yes, way too early, Tim. In fact, it's still, it's still morning here. It's coffee time, so... Yeah, cold coffee. Cold coffee. Oh, well. Submerge your phone in water. <laughs> Be right back. Okay. What? That's what we were thinking of doing with a cat. Yeah, I would love to buy a cat. I'm just not going to have the funds for it right now. Maybe with time, if I build my channel up to, you know, like some of the channels are, um, maybe, but, you know, not right now. So, depends on the time zone. Yeah, it is 5 o'clock someplace. There's no doubt about that. But I have a lot of work I have to do today, guys. So, I can't be cracking a beer open this early in the morning. I've got to go out and set real estate signs up and take pictures and do some videos of some of my real estate listings that I got. Um, I, I've got a busy day ahead of me today for stuff I have to get done. So, uh... Wow, offering to pay you, offering to pay per week, get a crew member job on a boat, say a thousand bucks a week, but no experience. Would offering to pay per week, get a crew member job on a boat, say a thousand bucks a week, but no experience. Uh, Craig Chris, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, would offering to pay per week to get a crew member job on a boat? There's a lot of people that work on boats. Um, I don't know what you're talking about there. Could you put that into some perspective? Just got allocated my river mooring. Oh, that's cool, Og, isn't it? You're selling property and I'm buying property. Well, Keith, why don't you buy my property and we'll both solve that problem at the same time? Wouldn't you love to live up here in Alaska? It'll put you in the right frame of mind. Yeah, actually, guys, I don't... No, that's not true. I do have a couple beers left, but nah... No, I got I got too much work to do today. I'm in a good frame of mind, guys. I really am. I'm I'm in a good place, and I'm really trying to wake up, cut the beer back and the alcohol consumption back. Just you know, because I have a lot of work to do right now and trying to knock the pounds off. So, getting very aggressive with trying to knock the pounds off. Chartering is an option I've seen promoted. Mooring sun sail by yeah. Well, those companies are really aggressively looking for people to buy boats to put with them. But I guess here's my statement. Did you see the pictures of all the boats in, in Nanny Key Marina or in uh, um, Tortola that were in the hurricane hole, all the charter boats that got destroyed? Do you really want to be the owners of one of those boats the next hurricane comes through? I don't. Uh, it's been my experience that those charter companies simply don't care enough about your boat. You know, it's all about making money for them. So I stay away from those kinds of deals. Your real estate video on your property was well done. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Is anyone sailing Tranquilo? I've been watching them. Yes, Dave. You get a crew, but you shouldn't have to pay. You should be paid. Kyle, there's way too many people out there wanting to crew on boats. So pay for getting on a boat on a weekly basis instead of taking pay. You give one in exchange for the experience. Yeah, Craig, you know, there are so many people that want to go sailing that will volunteer to be crew or will actually pay you to be on the boat. Um, Paul and Cheryl Shard uh, are in the process right now of making a new boat in England, uh, Southerly 48. And uh, they offer people where you can rent a cabin on their boat while they're out, you know, sailing wherever they're going. And people pay you know, huge sums of money. It's called chartering, but it's just chartering the cabin instead of chartering the entire boat. Um, you know, like if you want to jump on board their boat when they cross the Atlantic, it's $12,000 for a couple. So if you and your wife want to join them when they cross the Atlantic, you have to pay them $12,000 to do that and then crew on board. As long as there's people willing to pay those kinds of funds to do that, there's no reason to pay someone to be crew. 
Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. Why would they pay for a person with zero experience? Well, the, yeah, they, they don't pay. You pay them. In other words, the person with the zero experience would have to pay them $12,000 to be on the boat. Thanks, whole shot. I appreciate it. Lots of boats will bring you on for free, and you might have to pay for your food. Yes, Kyle. A lot of them will do that. If if it's someone like a private person who's not a uh, uh, not a licensed captain and not interested in doing chartering, um, yes, sometimes you can get on and just go from them from point A to point B in exchange for being part of the crew. So. Yes, yeah, saw the Pyramid of Boats in Tortola was an interested in program like Eric Smith's ACY or Fontainebleau and Juneau. Yeah, I I tend to stay away from those. I don't want somebody else managing my boat and putting it out in charter. Those charter boats get the crap beat out of them. Um, having been a charter, having chartered many times in the British Virgin Islands, uh, um, I can tell you those boats are, are run by people that have no clue what they're doing. And... So therefore, you know, you're going to have a lot of wear and tear uh, from people that just don't care about your boat. Um, I wouldn't do it. Yes, Cruise Seekers is a good site for trying to find uh, getting on boats or if you have a boat to get people to, to go on with you. So buying three acres in Quartzsite. Okay, well, good luck with that. <laughs> if they can get that good for them, great idea. Yeah. Megan learned so much when she was out selling. Well, sure she did. I'm going to look into that. I am cash flush, but I have nothing to offer as far as experience. Oh, there you go, Craigrist. Megan should buy her own boat. Yes, Sailing Dijon, I agree 100%. Megan should get a boat or crew on another boat, but she should start making some content, Cam. She should making some content and getting some content out on YouTube. Especially if it was selling related. She would be instantly popular and be making money immediately. So, Cruisers Forum has plenty of crew. Yes, there's there's a bunch of them, guys. Um, there's, a, there's a tremendous opportunity for you to be able to crew on other boats. Even people without experience, you can crew on other boats. Um, you know, if you're a, a competent skipper and you own your own boat, uh, quite often, you're looking for people just to jump on board to to make passages and stuff. So, um, and there's you know, and it does that doesn't have to be an experienced person to do that. You know, you can train anybody to sit there in the cockpit and watch the gauges and look around, make sure there's no boats around while you get three hours sleep. So, um, lots of good opportunities in that regard. So. Amanda said she would if she had... Well, yeah, and I think anybody would if they had the money. No waterfront property court site. No, I don't think so. Something Doodle's boat came through the hurricane, did it survive. I have not heard Sam Deke. I, I, and I don't subscribe to Bob's channel anymore, so I don't know. I You know, I'm not going to be a good resource for that. You'll have to tune into Bob's channel for that. Need a coffee and a smoke break. Okay. My content doesn't live with the channels I watch. I'm special and slightly askew. Yes, Rhonda. Yes, Cheshire Canary is special. Very special and slightly askew. No doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about it. So, anyhow, somebody asked a question earlier and I said I would get back to it and I never did. Uh, ask your question again and I will try to do that. So, Taking a turn at the helm while the captain gets some sleep is huge. Absolutely, yes, Kyle. But but it doesn't require anyone to be a rocket scientist. You know, it, it just it just requires a warm body, someone with vision that can get up and look around and you know, yep, there's no boats anywhere to be seen, it's all good, or yep, the wind's still doing the same thing. I don't have to change anything. Um as people get a bit more experience, you know, they can learn to do more. Uh, I really like the way um um, some of the other YouTube channels do when they have crew on board, they will, they'll sit and, and they'll, they'll buddy, they'll do a buddy system. Okay. When you have new crew on board, uh, you'll, you'll do, uh, um, 
You'll break it up so that there's two people, one experienced person, one inexperienced person at all times doing watch. And this way, the experienced person can give the inexperienced person directions, just kind of sit back and instruct them on what they should be doing. You do that together for, you know, three or four days. And at that point, the person should know enough to be able to stand watch on their own. Um, with certain instructions, you know, like if this happens or if that happens, wake me up. So, yes, Dolce, uh, Delos is really good at that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Hey, Terry, how you doing? Yep, Delos does the buddy crew. Yes, and everybody should. That's exactly the way it should be handled, guys. It's exactly the way it should be handled. Can't you just use an autopilot and have a kip? And have a kip? What's a kip, mini mechanic? Uh, yes, you can use autopilot, but your autopilot's not going to look around and see if there's any other boats coming. Or the autopilot's not going to recognize a wind change. To some degree, they do. Some autopilots, you can set them for a specific uh, compass heading. And so, you know, the rudder will adjust depending on the, how the winds change a little bit. If the winds change a lot, though, it's not... In fact, the, the autopilot can actually work against you if the winds, you know, if the winds are coming out of the east and now they're coming out of the west, your autopilot's actually going to do more damage than good. So, can't wait for you to get on the water and do the same with Donna. That would be nice. I don't know um, if Donna's even here today. I don't, I don't, she hasn't commented, so I don't know if she's here. Uh, it seems that some of these folks slept for a few hours with no one at the helm, just radar alarms and AIS alarms. Yes, Tim, and, and there are a lot of people out there single-handing, and that's what you do. Uh, you have electronics, and you have to trust your electronics. Um, AIS is a uh, system that identifies all the other boats. Uh, each of the commercial ships especially have a transponder where they put out a radio signal around them that says, hey, this is us, this is who we are, this is you know the name of our boat and how big we are and whatever, and this is the direction and speed that we're heading at. And then your boat, you'll have a AIS receiver that'll receive that information, and on there, it'll have a scope showing all the boats around you, and you can set an alarm that says if any boat gets within you know, five nautical miles of my boat to sound an alarm. If any of those boats get within a mile of my boat, sound an alarm. And that'll wake you up, and then you can get up. Hopefully, it'll wake you up, and then you can get up and change course should you need to. Somebody used to watch for icebergs. Yes, and again, Steve, you can set radar to uh, to watch for icebergs now. Um, some icebergs. Some icebergs, if they're completely below the surface, you're not going to see them. If what they're known as a growler, which is an iceberg that's completely under the water, even your radar is not going to see them. So if you're up in the North Ocean, you really need to have somebody up on watch with some powerful lights on at all times. So you need at least six crew to do the buddy thing on long passages. No, you can do it with just three or four people. Um, you just, you know, not going to get much sleep the first couple of days. That's all. Racing is a great way to learn. Hey, smoking, how are you? Plenty of people single hand. Yes, there's lots of people that single hand, and so you learn to do it without anybody. Uh, I know some people that single hand, and you know they'll sail along until they get tired, and then they'll just drop sail. They'll drop the sails. They'll just pull all the sails down and just bounce around in the ocean, just float, or let the currents take them where they want to go. Um, you know, that's one way of handling it. But even then. You still need to have an alarm up because even though you're just floating around in the ocean, that doesn't mean some big container ship or something's not going to run you over. So, getting warm in here, so my back got itchy. Uh, okay. Is AIS info available for free online? Yes, Chris, just research AIS on, on boats. And it'll show you uh, there's all kinds of stuff to be learned about it. Yes, absolutely. Just do a search for AIS. Um, and you should be able to find what you're looking for. If not, then private message me and I'll send you some links. Autopilot equals Obama. At the hell. Maybe so, Doc. Long passages are easy with a bucket of cocaine to keep you awake. Yeah, well, that's not the way you want to do it, but... Uh, hey, Cam, you take care. Mini Mechanic, I'm only joking. Bye, Cam. 
Yeah, Kim, you take care. We'll see you later. Tell Kelly I said hi. Tell Megan I said hi. And get on her about putting some content up. She's got to start getting some content out. She hasn't done a single video yet. Very disappointed in Megan. I had high hopes for her. Hey, Steve, you take care. For AIS, search marinetraffic.com. There you go, S. Viacula. That's a good idea. S. Viacula in the house, guys. Oh, hey, you know what? Let's use this moment to do shout-outs. S. Viacula is a YouTube channel. Anybody else on here that's got a YouTube channel, say hello and let people subscribe to you. Uh, I know Cheshire Canary has a YouTube channel. Anybody else with a YouTube channel, then get on here. Now's your time for a little self-promotion, guys. Just say, hey, I'm so-and-so, and, and please subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and feel free to put that in the chat right now. Um, I, I welcome it. I like to help out other people. So I know a little about AIS Cowboy. This ain't my first rodeo. There you go, Chris. The link to did not work. Okay. Alt plus F4. Hello, Andy. Since you have to load video, too busy with work. Still. Okay. Well, nobody is putting anything in there. I guess we don't have any of the YouTube creators on today. Oh, that's odd. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts on sideband radios? Um, you know, I think the, the sideband radios are great, you know, for for being able to talk to people long distance. Um, you know, the SSBs uh, coming in, teamed up with a Pactor modem to get uh, weather faxes and stuff used to be the way that was done. But today's day and age, that's really old technology. Um, everything's kind of moved away from that. So um, I personally would not invest in a SSB, um, which is a single sideband. I would not invest in SSB in a Pactor modem for my own boat. Uh, there's better, um, more reliable technology today for doing that and cheaper. You know, SSBs and a Pactor modem, that's a lot of money to spend for that. Then you have to subscribe to a service. So, um, so I would, I probably wouldn't do that. But would you use auto tracking Genoa when single handing? Um, yeah, you know, auto tacking. Is there really such a thing? You know, I mean, it. I don't know. Uh, mini mechanic, I would use every opportunity I have if I was single-handing. You know, whatever's to make life easier for you, I would want to use. But um, it just depends on the conditions. It absolutely just depends on the conditions. So getting first video up, stay tuned. Okay, Selling Dijon's getting their first video up, stay tuned. Good deal. I'm on I hate us, so hate to ask for subscribers. Home Place Journal's in the house. Yep. Um, she does some homesteading stuff, pretty nice stuff. You might check her out. Not only mods can post a true link in chat. Remove the spaces around the dot in dot com. There you go, Dave. Okay, guys. Well, we've killed another great hour here on the live stream. Uh, nothing but good stuff happening up here in Alaska. I'm in a great mood, optimistic. Hopefully, we'll be able to get out on the water pretty quickly. Had a couple good videos that we put out this week on some boat reviews. Got some more coming up. Um, hopefully coming out here pretty soon. So, Tweety Bird. Hey, Tweety Bird. We heave too for short breaks, lunch, etc. It really helps on rough weather crossings. Always surprised how few new boat skippers don't know how. Yeah, a lot to be said about that. Ruby Rose did a good video in communication devices. Yes, they certainly did, Chris. Very good video. Uh, if anybody needs a crew member who is willing to pay, please shout out two or three weeks in the Caribbean in the next couple of months. There you go, Craigerist. No problem with that. Great to see you happy, Papa. Thanks, whole shot. I appreciate it. Yeah, things are looking pretty good up here. So I'm I'm optimistic and think we're going to have a... a some some success. I'm hoping so. I'm I'm probably like 30 days out from getting snow. Although 29 degrees this morning, we're already getting into the freezing weather. So 
when you finally sell, what will be your boat budget? Um, Mike, I'm going to be looking at boats up to 55000 in that price range. So, like I said, it's going to be a whole different, you know, step up from the 20000 I was going to pay for the, uh, the rough seas. Hey, Donna. Thanks, Donna. I appreciate that. Give me a call, Donna, if you would. I'd like to talk, if possible. Hello, something Wong. Watch from North Korea. <laughs> yeah, somehow I don't believe people are watching from North Korea, so. <laughs> Subscribe, live aboard Ericsson 35. There you go. Sailing Dijon, guys. Go ahead and subscribe to Sailing Dijon. To subscribe, by the way, if you see their name, just go to the right side. Those three little dots that are there or uh, that will pop up. Clip on those, and you can clip on where it says go to their channel. That's the fastest way to go to someone's channel. You can just subscribe that way. So just to give them a shout out. So anyhow, guys, we're going to go ahead and pull the plug here. Miss Lily wants out, and so I need to get her out and do some stuff with her. So um, check out the Gordy and the Witch and the Wench channel on YouTube. It's a different kind of sailing channel. All right, Gordy and the Witch. Gordy and the Witch. I will check it out. I know a couple people now have mentioned it, so I will do that. So hashtag free Lily. All right, let me let her out. You guys want to say hello to the dog? Lily. Oh! Here. Here, say hello. Say hello. Can you say hello? Nope. Lily. Dog. Come here. Ah! Uh. I'm here. There. Let me get you over here where people can see you. There you is. See you? <laughs> She's such a big palooka. She really is. She just doesn't realize how big and strong she is. So, Anyhow, guys, we're going to pull the plug. We'll see you all later. I'm going to take the dog for a walk. And then I got a lot of work I have to get to here with my real estate business. So we'll talk to you guys later we'll have a live stream again on sunday and i should have a video coming out between now and then so we'll see you guys later you guys all take care bye from alaska you have a safe time guys and hey pray for those people down in puerto rico man they're gonna need a lot of help they're getting hammered right now so talk to you guys later bye